Awesome. What's up, YouTube? It's your favorite geek on a bike again. I got a new GoPro. As you can tell, because I'm using my old one as a second camera. I'm pretty stoked with it. I found this on Craigslist for a really good deal. It's a Hero 3 white. It's nothing special. It runs exactly the same uh, as that, as the Hero 2 did, but it's Wi-Fi capable, and it came with a bunch of extras, so I'm not gonna argue. Cause I'm off, uh, I'm off to run errands today. I'm taking a long way around. I got, I got some wedding stuff I gotta get done today. But I just, this is the first time I've been able to take the bike out in almost a week. It's just been raining nonstop here. It's been absolutely ridiculous. There is one thing I want to talk about that I'm a little late to the party on as of recently. And uh, that's the whole Yami Noob issue. Like, wow, really? I'm not going to sit here and bash him and just run the ringer on him. I feel like the internet's done a good enough job of that. I'm really here to kind of talk about the reaction. I mean, I don't condone the behavior that not Yami Noob had. I mean, two crashes within six months, both sending you to the hospital, and one of them that could have killed a person. It's guys like him that give motorcycle riders a bad name in the, to begin with. You know, I like to dig into the turns just as much as the next guy, but I usually do it in an environment that I find is somewhat safe. You know, where I'm the only one who could realistically get hurt. But my biggest wag of the finger to Yami's crash has got to be, you know, he was like a double yellow like this one right here. He was passing someone going who knows how fast in a blind turn. Like, it's been said a million times by other motor vloggers. That's one of the most unsafest situations he could put himself in. And frankly, he kind of deserved what came to him, honestly. He deserves the injuries he has. But a lot of people are upset with the way he handled the situation after the crash, which, myself included, if it had been anything taller than that Porsche, he would have been dead. He would have gone right through the windshield. And yet he was lucky enough to survive, and instead of being humble about it and admitting what he did wrong, he proceeds to make a GoFundMe to help pay for medical bills. That just blows my mind, because I guarantee you, that guy's got insurance. He's got to, as big as he is, he has the money to help pay for his medical bills. He has to. That being said, he makes a top 10 list of why he's a bad rider. And he, he did it satirically. So he was very unprofessional and his conduct was awful. He has a lot of subscribers on YouTube. He is a big influence in the motovlogging community and he is a big face on motorcycling as a whole. And for him to conduct himself the way he did after following his crash, it's just disappointing. And frankly says a lot to his character. But I'm not gonna sit here and bash you the whole time. I just think like, Motovloggers who have a subscriber count as high as he does, they're a big influence to the outside world. They're a window into what motorcycling is. Frankly, for him to con conduct himself the way he did, it's just sad. I mean, that's really all I have to say. There's been tons of other motovloggers all over the place who have done put in their two cents on the whole Yami Noob ordeal. I just felt like I should say something, you know? Not that I'm a big influence in the motovlogging community, but I feel like every voice, every video that's made is another one that he can watch, and hopefully it gets to him. Other than that, I really felt like I should explain um, what's been going on in my life recently, because I've posted a lot of videos with no explanation um, of where I've been. So over the winter, uh, I stopped posting for about seven months, and my channel just kind of went dead. I lost a couple subscribers, not that I had a lot to begin with. And I feel like that deserves some sort of an explanation. Um, so when the winter hits, I'm a little more susceptible to the season changes than most people. I definitely experience a big change when the seasons come, especially up here in New England where sunlight gets cut so low. You maybe have six hours of sunlight in a day if you're lucky, and that's from sun up to sundown. And I work second shift. So during the winter, I maybe see a, a handful of hours of sunlight. Not being able to ride, because this is kind of like a therapy for me, is riding and motovlogging to you guys. You know, being able to share my experiences. But if you don't, if you don't ride well into the winter, or even the spring, uh, early spring to really late fall, you don't really have a lot of riding season up here. Maybe a solid three months of nice weather. So you really gotta stick it out for the long haul. It just got difficult to keep up and edit the backlog of uh, winter videos that I actually had for the motovlog. 
And I know that's no real excuse, but you know, I'm back in the swing of things. It's super enjoyable, and I'm gonna get to try. As, I'm gonna try to motovlog out of my car during the winter. Not that my car is particularly amazing. You know, I feel like I should do something. I feel like I should keep channel flow somehow. So I just wanted to explain myself why my why I went dead for seven months, and that I'm I'm going to be better at a consistent flow rate. And I just felt like you guys deserved an explanation, so I apologize. All right, guys. Well, it's looking like I'm gonna run out of <laughs> looks looking like I'm gonna run out of battery for uh, this video on the new GoPro. I forgot to change out the battery before I left. Anyways, I feel like you guys deserved an explanation. Um, I promise I will get the SZ10 video out, uh, the follow up to the dead video. I got a couple more videos in the pipeline I got to do. I'm going out tomorrow to the Kankamegas Highway up in the White Mountains to film some videos with Maniac Moto and John Ozzy and a couple other guys who we're going to be riding with. But until then, please stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram at 8BitMotoVlog. Follow me on Twitter at 8BitMotoVlog. I mean, until next time, guys, peace.